Welcome everybody to Raw is War. We have Bo Dallas versus Big E starting off the show. I am Anthony Douglas joined by my colleague Jack Lubash and we are here for the for the opening to Raw is War. We want to thank you guys for coming back to uh, watch Raw is War. We know Bo Dallas is trying to put his name on the map against Big E. We have two former NXT superstars hitting it off on Monday Night Raw. Jack, who do you think has the advantage in this one? Yeah, if we're going to go with size, I'm going to go with Big E Langston. Uh, but you know, if you Bo leave, you can do anything. And this will be a true test to see if Bo can hang with the big guys here on Raw. This is going to be interesting. We know that uh, Ground Zero was a, a, a great success last week with a brand new champion in Hulk Hogan. Are we in the uh, 90s again? Hulk Hogan is the champion, not only beating Wade Barrett, but Brock Lesnar in a triple threat match. And the big shocker was at the end of that show when Wade Barrett, who we thought was going to take out Hulk Hogan, actually shook Hulk Hogan's hand and congratulated him. Yeah, and uh, we were told uh, via W.com that Wade Barrett is now embraced the fans. We know that he used to have bad news, but apparently he's got good news now. So that'll be interesting. I I'm looking forward to that coming up uh, on Friday, Wednesday. I said Friday, but I meant Wednesday because <laughs> you moved your show to Wednesday. Uh, but we don't know anything on this show besides the main event which is Batista versus Daniel Bryan. We know that Daniel Bryan is the number one contender for John Cena's uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Well, let's not forget those X factors and the uh, evolution. Uh, will any of them be in Batista's corner? Uh, I don't know. Where where evolution goes, they, uh, they're they not far behind, right? You can just assume that someone will be involved in that match. Uh, it, it's going to be a crazy main event. We'll find out. Uh, John Cena, his... Uh, Right now, he's filming a movie right now, so uh, he will be back at uh, Purgatory. But right now, currently filming a movie for WWE Films. Uh, I think it's called 12 Rounds 12. <laughs> Part 12, of course. 24 rounds. 20, 36 rounds of uh, pure John Cena. Uh, Three-hour movie. It's going to be great. Um, know, not, to, not to cut you off, but Bo does not seem to be phased by uh, Biggie Langston here. I would have thought Bo would have been on the outside, but... He's standing his ground, and that's kind of surprising. I think he's ready to to show the world that he can beat Big E. I mean, this used to be a main event feud on NXT, and now we're bringing it to the opening of Monday Night Raw. That's a great way to start it off, and uh, it'll be interesting to see who's going to get the upper hand here, who's going to get the victory, because this will put you closer to maybe the, uh, the television title, or you could come closer to the world title. It, 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 could, uh, it could elevate you one way or the other. Maybe a tag? I don't know. No, they always like to do those strange bedfellow matches. What would it be like if Biggie and Bo teamed up and went for the tag titles? Huh. Well, you know, the tag titles, we do know. Uh, last week, the Usos got beat by uh, the Wyatt family. Non title. Non title. But that all puts them in the runnings for a title match. But uh, let's also, you know, something else that we haven't touched on last week, remember in the main event, before the match started, Roman Reigns was attacked by Randy Orton, who is on Ground Zero's roster. Yeah, it's it's interesting because Randy Orton wasn't on that show on Wednesday. Um, I know he got drafted, but you know he might have not wanted to be drafted over there because of all of his friends got I, drafted to Raw. And then I would say that Randy Orton wants his home to be Raw is War, but it didn't go that way. All of his buddies were drafted, as you said, and now we have Sami Zayn as the newest member. Could, you could say Randy Orton's replacement. Right, he's the young up and coming guy. I know Triple H is a fan of uh, Sami Zayn, so uh, keep Sami Zayn uh, right there in Evolution, and he's uh, poised to be a, a big time player in the in the Raw is War universe. Uh, speaking of, of friends and things, let's let's go back to Ground Zero. I know this is Raw is War, but let's talk about it a little bit. The Real Americans back together. Oh yeah, that's uh, a Swagger was not a part of that roster, but uh, coming out and helping his uh, his partner Cesaro, and now they're back together. And let's also mention the fact that it's still with the turn of events that had happened after Cesaro did an impressive win over Mark Henry, Wade Barrett came out and attacked him. Now we talk about the end of that show where Wade Barrett sh was shaking Hulk Hogan's hand and showing sportsmanship. What what are your comments on? the acts of wade barrett when he took out cesaro i think wade barrett was trying to make a statement and uh it, it all goes back to this you can say wade barrett's a good guy a bad guy whatever you want but 
Honestly, if you're in the ring with Hulk Hogan and Hulk Hogan beats you for that world title, I'm going to hug that guy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's Hulk Hogan. It's the reason most of us like professional wrestling is because of Hulk Hogan. I know maybe some people say Stone Cold, but Hogan made wrestling popular. And you, if you had a match with Hulk Hogan, I would I would hug him, raise my hand, and be like, man, that was, that was awesome. Well, and Hogan didn't get the – he pinned the champion. He pinned Wade Barrett. So, I mean, that's that's bragging rights on Hogan's part. But could this also be – I can throw this out there. Do you think that could be mind games by Wade Barrett? Do you think he has something up his sleeve? Uh, it, it could be. Uh, you never really know with him. It, it's interesting to see uh, what Brock Lesnar does have to say about this because Brock Lesnar wasn't pinned. Does he? Is he the new number one contender? Because you know, technically, he wasn't pinned. But then again, Wade Barrett he does have that rematch clause, so we'll have to see. It might be it here though. Bo Dallas hitting the Bo Dazzler, and he kicks out. Uh, does that mean or does the ref do a very late count there? Yeah, he was taking his time, but you know what? The ref has final judgment and everything, as we always say that. Oh, he's going to take it outside. Oh, Biggie oh, no, hanging just, on. And he, that's impressive to pick a man of Biggie's size and throw him over the top rope. Two and a half count there, though. Uh, but yeah, uh, going back to, to ground zero, who is the, the true number one contender? Or we, or we see these three meet again come hell in a cell. You know... Uh, Brock has the right to say that he was not pinned, so he could be number one contender. But you also got to remember the rematch clause. Wade Barrett should automatically be number one contender to try to win back his what he thinks is his title. So, you know, there are a lot of unanswered questions, and hopefully this Wednesday we'll find out some uh, some answers to it. Oh, that's it. That's it. He just runs him over like a train. Oh, no, 2.9, he kicks out. Sounds like there's some believers in the crowd here, more than at the start of this match. Uh oh are we going to see that Bodog? He's setting him up for it. Oh, he's, he's going to do it? No. Okay, just playing mind game. Oh, yep, yep. He had to think about what he was going to do there. Oh, he's, he's just... He's just toying with him right now. He knows he has him right where he wants him, and he's just toying with him. But he needs to keep on him. I mean, you can't let a man of Biggie's size get his strength back. you got to stay on him. And Bo seems to be a little bit cocky here. And he's going for a neck breaker. You call it cocky, I call it confident. Well, you know, tomato, tomato. I just... And that was it. He did it. <laughs> okay, he just, but, he just had Biggie flustered. I don't know what the real strategy was there but there was the bow dazzler that kind of took all the wind out of a biggie right there but like we said I, you call the cocky i call it confident and i call it a win in the category for i guess uh to beat a man of biggie's size that's that's uh that's impressive and i guess he he like i said he was winning over fans making some more bow leavers out there and i mean i guess you could say i'm one of them i mean that's Biggie Langston is one of the biggest men on the Raw is War roster, and Bo just beat him. It is very intriguing by the way that he beat him, though. Remember, he just threw him back and forth in the turnbuckle and then got the pin. I don't know. And now he's not letting the ref raise his hand. It's not always the prettiest way, but it doesn't have to be pretty when you're when you're going for a win, you know. Like I always like to say, by any means necessary, get a pin. Doesn't matter if it's your finisher, whatever you do, as long as you get that 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 check mark in the win category and he <laughs> seems to kind of be in the ref's face there but a win nonetheless for bo dallas bo dallas wants the complete spotlight and he should get it coming up next we have our next contest here on raw is war and this is going to be a great one we have sammy zane going one-on-one -on -one with roman reigns look who is in the corner of sammy zane Part of evolution, the nature Rick boy Flair. Rick Flair, and I mean that to have Rick Flair come out with you of all people, that tells you something about Sami Zayn. I mean, through all of Rick Flair's career, and what um, do you what do you think of this? They're not coming out to Sami Zayn's music, but they're coming out to Ric Flair's music. Oh, I think this is Sami Zayn. I I don't think he's an official member of Evolution yet. I think this might be his test match to see what he can do and that's why rick flair is out here wow and it's the, it's very interesting here uh to see where this does lead but we know uh it's gonna be roman reigns he's gonna he's gonna try and hit that spear oh no is flair flair's in the ring though wait a second is flair a, no i don't know wait are they playing some kind of mind games here 
Oh, and Roman Reigns I mean, coming through the crowd. I don't know why Flair's in the ring. It's scheduled to be Sami Zayn versus Ric Flair, but... Or you mean Sami Zayn versus... Or versus Roman Reigns, but, you know, I wouldn't put it past Evolution to switch it up like this on Roman Reigns. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going to happen here, but Roman Reigns, he's ready, regardless of who he's fighting. I don't think he cares who he's facing. You could put him up against the guy in the front row wearing the striped t-shirt and he'll he'll beat him up but i don't know rain's kind of leery to get in the ring there because he was expecting sammy to be his opponent did it say sammy zane or did it say with sammy zane i don't know i'm not i'm confused here but we'll see how this plays out flair was in the ring though we know that no oh, it no, is no, sammy. no there it's the mind games okay so uh, whatever flair was doing he he i guess he was trying to say you know what Look at me. I'm. I got the back of Sami Zayn. So standing in that ring, uh, face to face with Roman Reigns, just saying, you know what? I I got his back. So. Did he need to take his robe off to prove that point? I I don't know. But Flair just Flair does what Flair wants. You know. Uh, nobody's gonna really argue with him with a track record like Ric Flair has. You can't you can't argue with the man. But nonetheless, it's it's mind games like only Evolution can do. What a great great showing though to have to have Sami Zayn. With Ric Flair, though, like a, a new up and coming guy hasn't done much on Raw's War, he's been in NXT for a while, but now to finally be on the big show and to have Evolution, you know, great legends well, like Triple H, like Ric Flair and Batista, multi world champions. My question is, why, why Sami Zayn? Not taking anything away from him and his ability in that ring, but out of everybody, why would he be your new future? Well. I, I want to point this out. We know behind the scenes, Triple H has a big hand in NXT. Uh, Triple H has been watching Sami Zayn for a while down there, down in Florida, and he said that Ooh, this nice. is the next guy. He's the next. He's the next star. And moves and, like that prove it. And and just think about this: if Triple H wants Sami Zayn to be the next guy, what better way than to mold him by his own hands and make him the star that he wants him to be? Well, and again, I have to bring up the question. He's not on the Raw's War roster, but Randy Orton. Yeah. He could be here. He wasn't at Ground Zero. He could be in the arena tonight. And I, 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 I wonder if it's jealousy or what, or maybe is he still a part of Evolution? I, I don't know. It's, it's, a hard, it's a hard thing to call, though. Uh, Randy Orton really, we know that Randy Orton does whatever Randy Orton wants to do. That is true. Um, he doesn't. Ki- he doesn't care. He'll kick you in the face when you're down, and he he smiles about it later. So, uh, he, him with evolution, I guess we could see that, but we don't know yet. We don't know. All we know is that he did make an appearance last week, and we'll we'll wait and see if he makes another one. Stiff kick to the back of Roman Reigns by Sami Zayn. And, you know, you look at evolution. You look at Batista. You look at Triple H. You look at Ric Flair. You look at the uh, Randy Orton. They all have different looks than Sami Zayn. I mean, look at look at the attire that Sami Zayn's wearing. Do you think he fits Evolution? Like I said, I think I think what they're doing is they're they're testing him out and they're gonna mold him. They're gonna they're gonna mold him. You know, how good would Sami Zayn look in a three piece suit? You know, oh Superman punch though. That's got to be it. Uh-oh, Ric Flair is not livid. Good. Oh, I thought that oh, was it to kick out of that. Wow. I thought but that was it. Though. I think that took a lot out of him, but he's reverses Reigns and nice arm drag. What oh, is this? Moon salt. But but I'm saying this. Uh Sami Zayn three piece suit, it's gonna happen sooner or later, I tell you. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have him drink the Kool-Aid. Triple H likes to do that with guys and brainwash him and put him on their side. We, we know exactly what happened. Remember the, the original evolution where uh they turned on won Randy Orton after he won the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh-huh. And, and I think it made thing, it stronger. What about the same thing could happen with Sami Zayn? What if he was one of, you know, he wins a title, Triple okay. H says, oh, Blue Thunder Bomb, that's it. Two? No, two count. I'm saying, what What if they're using Sami Zayn as, as a young athletic superstar like he is and then have him win the title and they turn their backs on him? You never know with these guys. I mean, right now they have his back, but you never know. Well, Tough Love is the name of the game in Evolution and you can't fault them for that because if you look at their track record they have so many titles between all of them and i think it was because of that tough love and look at roman reigns seems to be poised setting Sami Zayn for a move and all the spear (laughs) that is it and flair does not like what he sees but 
One, two, three. And, uh, and, and to do Flair. it right in front of Flair. And uh, you, that, it's, it's very interesting because Flair did not get involved. Usually you would see Ric Flair get up on the ropes. You'd see him try and distract the ref. But Flair just let it all go down. And uh, Like we said, this, this was probably his tryout match. And it was probably like, you're going to do this on your own type of thing. And now... I mean, that's not a great start for Sami Zayn to be an evolution to to lose. I, I mean, you're not taking anything away from Roman Reigns. He's a great athlete, but you almost want your debut singles match to go a little bit different than that. You got you got to think about like the the training. Triple H was not out there, uh, so you don't know what Triple H has. And you know, Triple H is probably sitting somewhere in the back in the locker room watching this all go down. So. Uh, Flair and Sami Zayn are out of there. They're not there anymore. So Roman Reigns is the winner of this one, which is uh, and he had a lot to prove tonight, losing he, losing the the number one contenders match against Dan O'Brien last week. He wanted to come out and make a a point to everybody. He proved it right there that he can hang with Evolution, and we'll see. There, there's there's more to be told for this story. Uh huh. What about this match? The ECW World Television title is online as Chris Jericho defends against Bray Wyatt, the leader of the Wyatt family. This is this is going to be great. This is a great contest. Chris Jericho, always a fighting champion. We know that uh, being a, a television champion, he, he never backs down from a challenge. You know, even back to the days when he won the Undisputed Championship, he was always a fighting champion in regardless of how that win went down. But uh, Jericho Bray Wyatt there is a lot to be told about these two but this is going to be interesting to see as this goes down we know that Bray still has the Wyatt family on his side because they all got drafted to Raw as War uh, Jericho's kind of a flying solo as he always does I don't think he's had a tag partner for, for a while since I think Big Show maybe Big Show I think was his last partner but you know this this says something that if, if Bray can beat Chris Jericho and become the new television champion and the the Wyatts go on to win the tag team titles, they're going to have the majority of the gold here in uh, Raw is 4. That would be interesting, but we don't know as far as the Wyatts if they're going to get a title shot coming up at the, the, the pay-per-view, the Purgatory, but good chance. Seems like they're they, in line for it. They are. The, the, uh, the Usos were... Uh, we're not victorious, so we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out, but we know that Chris Jericho has to defend that title, and uh, it's the television title, so you can expect that he defended a lot. It's it's one of those titles where you get a guy like Chris Jericho who, who wrestles his ass off and trying to defend that title day in and day out, and that's uh, Chris Jericho's style. He likes to wrestle, and he likes to put on good matches, so this is going to be a great match. And he is a very, very arrogant that smirk on his face, and he's he's earned the right to be arrogant like that. But he is going to have his hands full against this guy. Oh, and you know, you know that Bray Wyatt likes to play the mind games. He's known for those mind games, and we'll see if these mind games come into play as this match progresses later on. Uh, who knows if Bray Wyatt even really wants that television title? He could have something else in store. And this is always an impressive sight. Look at all of these these lights going off he's he's got these people brainwashed looks like bray wyatt is coming out by himself none of his uh, wyatt family members with him so is he really going to be by himself though i mean he's got these two guys in that eat out of the palm of his hands he's getting a title shot he's got the whole world in his hands he, he does and it, it, it amazes me the amount of fans that are on this guy's side that like you've said before drinking the kool-aid oh yeah but uh, I don't know. I don't really know who has the advantage here. Um, you're always at a disadvantage, though, when you are the champion. Because uh, all it takes is three seconds, and you can lose that title. Um, I don't think Bray is going to let let uh, Jericho off easy tonight. I think this is going to be probably the toughest challenge Chris Jericho's had in a while. And look at the smile, the laugh on Bray's face. He's ready. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I know we're not supposed to do this, but I think we're going to have a new television champion at the end of the night. We'll have to see. This is Chris Jericho's very first title defense on Raw is War. Uh, Bray Wyatt would love to take gold back home, but again, Bray Wyatt doesn't doesn't care about it. He he really could care less about a win or a loss as long as he can make a statement, and uh, he will do just that here, guaranteed. And this crowd is 
feels it they know that this could be the match of the night the match of the year between these two with that prize on the line chris jericho is ready he's not gonna back down from a challenge he, he's always a fighting champion he as looked, they said he looked like he had a little bit of fear in his eyes i don't know we'll see here as this progresses on starting off with some chain wrestling not the kind of match i expected but bray wyatt always trying to and if, you, if you notice, Bray went to Jericho. He didn't wait for Jericho to meet him in the middle. He went all the way to Jericho. Again, I don't. I don't think this is going to be a classic catch as catch can wrestling style. I think this will break down sooner or later with Bray Wyatt playing those mind games. That's what I say. But it, I, I'm excited though that we're actually seeing a title defense on Raw as well. I know we had one over on uh, Ground Zero with the the world title defending. And look at that, we had a new champion. And we did. So if anything's gonna History repeat itself. It might happen tonight. New champion, maybe. I mean, you could have a title defense here on Raw if your champion would show up. But uh, <laughs> hey, our, our uh, the main champion on Raw, John Cena. He's out doing those public appearances. He's making the money. He's out there doing the movies, trying to put Raw on the map as the number one brand in sports entertainment. So, you have your own uh, your own fighting champion. We have our own uh, superstar on Raw's War. And, Jericho taking it to Bray with a nice backbreaker over his knee. Oh, right to the eye. You hate to see a breakdown like that right away. But Jericho with a drop kick. I think he did a blind drop kick and hit him. Not not even uh, not sure what he was going for, but he hit him right in the face with that Ooh. one. And Jericho keeping it on the mat and working on the arm of Bray Wyatt now. You can see some of those moves that he learned from the dungeon, the, the heart dungeon from Stu Hart. Um, well, I would think that he would work on the, his, his legs and his back so that when he puts applies, if he gets a chance to apply the walls of Jericho, it'll allow for Bray to tap out quicker. Well, here we go. He's looking for a suplex, letting all the blood rush down to his head, maybe setting up for that code breaker. That's another one of his... Uh, and that oh, and there's the cocky pin. And he doesn't even get a one count. That might come back to bite him later. Bray is not going to let him win that way. But yeah, you mentioned the code breaker. That can come out of nowhere, and it is effective. Again, with another suplex and another pin. He another is trying cocky. to play the mind games. You know, Bray's, Bray's known for the mind games, but Jericho, he also has his own mind games. If you remember back in uh, WCW, he played a lot of mind games with Goldberg, uh, Dean Malenko. There, there's, a, there's a huge list of wrestlers that Jericho went up against and, and used those mind games. His cocky mind games, like we said, confident or cocky, whatever you want to call it, but... Chris Jericho, uh, always another gonna do it again. suplex. Is he doing it again? Third time's a charm, though. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna go for the pin again, and oh, not man. even a one count. And Jericho now going to the outside. What is he doing? I mean, oh, he had the. He, oh no, he he is trying to get in the head of Bray Wyatt. They're taking they're taking our table apart. And you notice Bray's just standing there, letting him do all the work and see what happens. Oh, Bray loves the. Uh oh, uh oh, oh, right near that table. This is close. We have a three count on the outside. And Jericho, he had something in mind with that table here, but you know this is not no disqualification match. Oh, there we go. Bringing him back inside. Maybe, maybe again, just with the mind games as he's walking in place, <laughs> trying to be a robot, trying to make fun of uh, Bray Wyatt. Here we go. Bray coming back, though. Oh, just tosses him over his head. By like his strength. Looks by his ears. Well, I, I'm still wondering what Jericho had in mind with that table, but well, maybe he didn't have anything in mind. Maybe. Uh, mind games. I mean, like you had said before, Jericho is no stranger to playing mind games on people. Right now, I think Bray is probably the the most he, out of everybody on any roster. He plays the most mind games, and not only with wrestlers but with the fans. And these fans, like they are on his side, and I don't get it. Oh, Jericho fighting back though. This one's breaking down. Are you going for it again, again. The crowd seems to be booing. The crowd does not like this. He's going to go for a pin again. And another not one even, count. Not even a one count again. I don't, I don't understand Jericho's oh, he's strategy. Got him. He's pulling him up. Code breaker. And he hits it. Oh, he's <laughs> busted open. Bray is bloody and battered. 
And no. no. <laughs> he just got his shoulder up off the mat. But we know Bray Wyatt busted open. We allow blood here on Raw. Oh, and he, he he's clutching that arm. We know one of Jericho's patented moves is Wait. the arm bar. Bray I'm, pulling him up. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think he pissed oh, off. Oh, there he Bray. goes. Signature. And he puts the hand over the face. One, two, and two and Kick a half. Out. But Bray, he does have that finisher. Let's see if he's going to hit Sister Sister Abigail. Oh, he's got him. Off the ropes. Oh, oh and that. runs over him like a tank. That may be all. If he goes for a pin off of that, that could but be it. He wants to add insult to injury. And Bray now picking up Jericho. Will this be Sister? No. Oh, throwing him in the corner. He's got something bigger in store for him. Just a strong Irish whip. That might be it. One, two. No, two count. Only a two count. Bray was one second away from becoming the new television champion. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's just he's just throwing him down. What's going to oh, happen? Stomping on, oh. oh, but Jericho fighting back. The resiliency, the veteran-like skills from Chris Jericho, we know. Another standing drop kick, and Jericho now with a quick pin. Two count only. Another kick out. There's, nobody is sitting. Everybody is on their feet for this match. Yeah, you can see the crowd is, is heavily invested in this match. And reversal again. Down he goes. Let's see. Bray Wyatt. Uh-oh. He's, oh, no. he's going up top. Not usually Bray Wyatt's style, but we'll see if this one will pay off. Jericho getting up. No, but Bray jumps down as he sees Jericho standing up. I don't know what Bray had in mind there, but... It might have been better for Bray since he's not known to be a high flyer. Oh, working that arm again. Jericho is. Again, those submissions are Chris Jericho's forte. Oh, just a kick to the back. That's a statement right there saying, I am better than you. And we know Chris Jericho always thinks that. He always thinks he's the best in the world at what he does. You know, he may think that, and that could be the case, too. I mean, has anybody proven him wrong? Not yet. He, he is the television champion here. We'll see if Bray, Bray does. And this, oh, walls, walls, uh -oh, uh -oh, walls, uh -oh. walls. This is it. This if is he gets it. them over, this could be it. Oh, this is it. This is it. Look at how close he is to those ropes, though. Oh, <laughs> he, he got that rope break, and Jericho is gassed right there, too. Bray getting up himself. Both men giving this all they can. Oh, and a swift punch to the face, and that that is a statement right there. He's got him in the corner. <laughs> Jericho is out of it. All those suplexes are finally coming back to haunt him. He used all his energy to put the walls of Jericho in. And uh, it, it made him tired, but that's that's Jericho. He's known for these these long matches. That he he's he's that Iron Man, I guess you can call him, where he likes to put on the long match. This might be it after that walls of Jericho. That could be no, no. Bray. swift kick out, not even a one. Trying to this crowd cannot believe it. I think they're split right down the middle on who they want oh, to reversal. have win. Uh oh, uh -oh. here uh -oh. we go, another signature. Oh, and there we go. That is it, Bray. This has to be it. One, two, three. That's <laughs> it. Bray Wyatt is your winner. We have a new television champion here on Raw is War. I think I, I think this was the 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 fault of Chris Jericho. He tried to be cocky, tried to play mind games when Bray Bray well, he, just kept it in the ring. He could have kept this on the ground, but he kept giving suplexes. And when you give a suplex to a man of Bray's size, that's going to wear you out. And I think that was the thing is he wore himself out. And just like that, Bray was able to, to hit his move. And the results are him, the new television champion. That is exciting to see this year. And now we know Eric Rowan, Luke Harper want those tag titles. They could rule. The Raw is War bland, bland, Brand. I was about to say Bland. I don't know why. But uh, Bray Wyatt, television champion. We know Chris Jericho is not going to be happy about that. Well, you know, the, the fans are behind Bray here. And I don't I don't know. That, that could be the future of Raw is War right there. Bray Wyatt, the new television champion. Congratulations. You earned that one. Oh, and you know, up next, we're going to have a rematch from last week. Uh, what? A rematch? 
Oh, I, was, yeah. I wasn't told about this. Oh, yeah. I just informed. Corey Graves taking on William Regal. And we know that Graves has a, a win over Regal from last week. Like I said last week, there was more to be told about this story. And the rematch is happening tonight. And this is... Uh, if you thought that was a wrestling match, you're, you're going to get another five-star wrestling match on Raw is War. This is great. Corey Graves uh, proving a statement against William Regal. And... Uh, Regal wants to get a little bit of revenge. I, I I don't I don't know this guy this Corey seems he seems a little too good for William Regal. Not taking anything away from Regal and his career that he's had, but I think that this young up and comer Corey Graves is a little too much for William Regal to handle. But could be proved wrong tonight, and Regal may come back with a little bit of vengeance and uh, take out Corey. Let's let's not let's not be uh, let's not beat around the bush here. Let's talk about it. Regal's prime is already past, and Corey Graves is right in the prime of his career. So, uh, if they met at both of them being in the prime of their career, do you think that Corey Graves would get the win, or do you think Regal would be able to to stretch him out and get a victory? I think Regal, Regal in the prime of his career, I think could take on Corey Graves, but I. I, I really think that Corey is going to get another victory here tonight. And I think uh, I think more than anybody, he needs to prove to himself that he can take out a, a, a legend of William Regal's stature. And I think the crowd is fully behind William Regal. It, it's sort of like a, a personal... A personal bucket list, I would say, for Corey Graves to try and beat William Regal again. Uh, prove that he he is not only a great a wrestler, but a, an, an athlete. Because that's what William Regal is. He's an athlete. He he knows all the technical moves. He's, he's on the top of his game when it comes to technical wrestling. But if Corey Graves can get another submission victory over William Regal... I mean, that, that'll put Corey Graves at the top of being like one of the top submission wrestlers in the world right now. All I know is this is going to be an interesting contest, and you know, if, if Regal wins, do we go to a third match? Uh, we have Purgatory right around the corner. I mean, huh? I, I think this leads to Purgatory, but that's just my mm, that's what I'm thinking. But we'll see what what actually happens. It, if if Corey Graves can get a victory, does Regal even want to have another match? You just say, well, you know what? Maybe my time is my gonna, time is just done. Just gonna say that I think if, if Regal loses this match, he might be at that point in his career where he might be questioning whether he should go on or not. What a contest that would be, though. A, a sort of like a, a farewell match with Regal and Corey Graves. Who knows? But Regal, he, he's trying to prove himself. Maybe Regal's on a on a personal quest as well, trying to say, you know what, I can still hang. I'm I'm not that old. I I can I hang think, with the young guys. I think he wants to maybe have one more run at that the the big one, and you know you, you can't do it when you lose to rookies like Corey Graves. So this this match will be a big. Uh, test to see whether regal will continue or not and i mean at, i at the rate tonight's going i wouldn't be surprised if Corey gets another win I mean, well here's the thing regal has never won the big one we know that uh he's been european champion he's won all those titles uh, but never able to win the big one he wants to win the world heavyweight championship and uh You'd have to say before retirement, that would be something that he would want to do. You know, the European title was big for William Regal. Uh, I, I don't know that you could say, you could classify what's the big one and what's not the big one, but I think I think he would love to be able to hold one of the, the championships, whether it's here on Raw's War or if you can go to Grand Zero. And I mean, <laughs> what, what about him versus Hogan for the title? Wow, WCW back again. That would be great to see, but... Uh, I don't know that those two have ever gotten a ring together. I can't recall it, but maybe they have. Maybe some. If they did, who do you think would win? I don't know. I, right now, I'm saying Corey Graves walk all over William Regal, so I don't <laughs> think William Regal even stands a chance. But we'll see. Regal with a suplex sending Corey Graves over. I will say this though: whether you want Corey Graves to win, whether you want William Regal to win, you want to just watch a great wrestling match, and that's what we're seeing right here. Uh, Corey Graves is going to get a lesson from one of the best. There we go. Russian leg sweep sending him down. And Regal is a no-nonsense kind of guy. He's not known for being you know, the most talkative guy. He gets it done inside that ring. 
And that's the way that he does it. That's his Sometimes style. Sometimes with the help of some brass knuckles. Hey, brass knuckles are all legal when the ref doesn't see them. And that's William Regal's style. Do it behind the ref's back because a win is a win. And there's a nice neck breaker by Regal. And you know, I, I'm seeing a different William Regal than from last week. He seems to be on top of his game this week, and he keeps this up. I think he's going to get the victory, maybe. Oh, yeah. Very focused, poised, ready. Uh, doesn't want to lose to Corey Graves again. I almost say he was embarrassed last week. I mean, you tried reaching out to him for some uh, for an interview, and he, he wouldn't talk to you. He wouldn't talk to anybody, and I think it was because he was embarrassed. Back to the announce table. We saw this earlier in the, in the last contest. Never was actually used, but Regal... Uh -oh. Uh oh, suplex. Oh, <laughs> almost going through that table. Whew. A suplex on the outside. Now that's that's oh, oh. stiff <laughs> shots to the head. And this that. is old school Regal right here. This is the Regal everybody knows and loves. There's that Regal strong style coming back into effect here. And another suplex, just tossing him around like a rag doll. Just a big rag doll is Corey Graves. And let's keep in mind again, this is not a no holds barred, can't, falls count anywhere match. There is a. a the ref is counting, and they have a time limit to get back in the ring. And let's not kid each other. A ring cannot contain this. These two in. Mm. No, uh -oh. I, I say. I oh, say, a stiff punch just sending him down. I say if Regal wins this, we let him go at it in a uh, no holds barred, bare knuckle brawl match. Oh, they, oh, sending him into the steps. Yeah, this, this this is just broken down into a fight. We wanted to say this was going to be a wrestling match. Well, this is a fight now, and th th this is totally different than the first time these two met. And the ref is allowing a lot to go on here. Giving a lot of leeway on this one, but the, the, those steel steps are a part of the ring, so I guess it's legal. You can decide that for yourself if you think that's a, an okay rule or not, but I say John Cohn doing a good job. A six count, Regal going to be able to make it back. Oh, Corey Graves taunting. He thinks he's got this one. Oh, just runs into him. Here we go. Backbreaker. Backbreaker by Regal. Sending Corey Graves down. And Regal may be looking for a submission. Uh-oh. Oh, Regal he's get, stretch. He's got him. Regal stretch. He's got the submission right in the center of the ring. Corey Graves. Uh -oh. oh, look at the, oh, oh, these he taps. Taps. Regal makes him tap <laughs> in the center of the ring. That was a statement right there. William Regal able to get the victory. Evening this out. Like we said, though, this broke down into a fight, and Regal caught him off guard, stretched him right in the middle of the ring. An arm is not supposed to there's bend no, that there's, way. There's no way you can get out of that move. Once he puts it in, he locks it in. There's no way to get out. Look at that. Look at the way your legs are torqued. And these, Look at that. He has it. That you perfectly look like, locked in. He basically looks like a human pretzel right there, and there's no way to get out of that. And look at how he smashed Corey's face into the mat after it was all said and done. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Extending the hand is William Regal. Corey Graves oh. <laughs> does not want to shake his hands. Well, you know. Oh, man. There is a lot more to be told by this. Regal was showing the respect, which he didn't really have to do, considering... The lack of respect that, well, that was Corey a, Graves. That was not only a slap to Regal's hand, but that was a slap to his face. Oh, man. What, what, a, what a great showing there. But we have Batista, Daniel Bryan, and Seth Rollins on Batista's half. Why is Seth Rollins with Batista? Um, I'm not um, sure what that is. More on. mind games? Oh, not Seth Rollins. Oh, it's Triple H, but... Okay. Apparently, there was a glitch in the game where it said Seth Rollins was with him. Uh, Seth Rollins? Okay. Apparently, our uh, video guy is going to get fired for making that graphic. <laughs> so um, Maybe we'll have to go in and edit the uh, entrance because they have the default one on and they come out to Ric Flair's name. But. <laughs> well, okay, well, anything can happen on Raw's War. <laughs> looks like our video guy is going to get fired again. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be any glitch in this entrance. Batista, Daniel Bryan, one on one with Triple H out there, though. <laughs> oh, boy. The crowd loves Daniel Bryan. Not a single person's in their seat right now. I'm still thinking about that last match, though. Corey Graves not wanting to shake the hand of William Regal. Well, you know, that leaves it open for the third and final encounter, maybe, between them, since they're one and one. Who's going to be the better man? Like I said, I think this should be bare knuckles, no holds barred, falls count anywhere match. I think so, too. I think I think you have to let that 
I, th- I think you, you have to make it for purgatory. I think it must be done. I think you give them a week off. You let them uh, stew over it and see, set it up for purgatory. One last final match. Well, William Regal, speaking Corey of the last match, this is our main event of the evening. Daniel Bryan, of course, your number one contender for that title that John Cena holds. John Cena, of course, not here tonight. He's off filming 36 rounds, part two. But uh, we've got Batista versus Daniel Bryan with Triple H, who is the leader of Evolution in his corner. And as we said before, where Triple H is, the rest of Evolution is not going to be far behind. Of course, Sami Zayn losing to Roman Reigns earlier, probably not making Triple H the most happiest of all people. But Ric Flair, Sami Zayn, they could play a part in this match. And let's also not forget Randy Orton, who we have not seen since last week when he attacked Roman Reigns before his match. One thing about Randy Orton is is we know he has a story, a, a huge rivalry with Daniel Bryan in the past. So it'll be interesting to see if that that comes up again. Um, Triple H, though, like we were talking about Sami Zayn, I still think whether he lost or not, uh, being in the the tutelage, the uh, the hands of Triple H, it's going to do wonders for Sami Zayn. And well, you now, know what? They'll probably have a meeting backstage saying, "You know what, kid." Let me help you out. Let me give you some tips, and uh, we might see a new a new different style from well, Sami Zayn. That's just it. Triple H can look at that match between Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns and pick out what Sami did wrong, what he did right, and make him his own. He can mold him. And if Sami is going to allow Triple H and the rest of Evolution, who have tons of experience, mold him, he could be a dangerous, dangerous man to mess with. Oh, Batista using the strength. No, Daniel Bryan using the speed, though. Now, I'm going to pose this question to you, Anthony. If Batista beats Daniel Bryan, does that put Batista in line for a title shot since Daniel Bryan is the number one contender right now? I don't know. I I think I think whether or not he wins or loses, he's always in contendership for that that world title. Here we go. Northern Lights. Nope. Too close to the ropes. But I think Evolution. They they have a, a different agenda than that. Just that world title. They want to make an impact here, and they they want to put Sami Zayn on the top of the map. Uh, Triple H, Ric Flair, Batista, maybe Randy Orton. That's that's the the question I want to know. Where the hell is Randy Orton? I don't know. That could have been a one time thing. Triple H is just like you know, this will be your last hurrah as uh, a member of Evolution. But I mean, it to me, it still doesn't make sense. I mean, there was no other member of Evolution in that match last week. What if, what if he's not even with Evolution? What if we're just reading into it too much and he and that's just a wanted to make an impact for Ground Zero? I mean, that is a possibility. That could have been management at Ground Zero sending Randy Orton over to say, let's mess with their main event. Because they knew what they had coming up, and that was a triple threat match between Brock Lesnar, Wade Barrett, and Hulk Hogan for the championship belt. And, you know, I it could have very well been mind games. Here we go. Pulling himself up by the ropes. That's the real story right here. Drax the Destroyer getting European uppercutted by Daniel Bryan. And Batista getting some uh, some uh, rubbery legs there. Looking for a front face lock. No, reversed. And, and you see Triple H out there just uh, Triple, holding his arm. Yeah, he has yet to play any part in this match. I would have to say that if things start to go Daniel Bryan's way, that that could change, and Triple H will be involved in this match. Oh, you see Triple H out there. He he was he was shouting at Daniel Bryan, but Daniel Bryan getting the kicks. These are the kicks that Daniel Bryan likes to do. This always sets up for that submission, that yes lock. Oh, oh there it is. to the face. Down he goes. That's it. His shoulders are down. And a kick out by Batista. Don't take anything away from Batista. He is a he's a world class ath- athlete, and uh, he oh oh I he's, I thought he was going to set him up for that yes lock, but he is. He's pulling him up. Triple H is telling the crowd to not cheer anymore. Yes lock, yes lock, yes lock. But, but he's too close right to there. the ropes. Oh, the, he has to break it. He's right near the ropes. That was a bad move for Daniel Uh-oh. Bryan. And a belly to belly sends him down. That was a terrible move by Daniel Bryan. If it was me, I would have moved him to the center of the ring. That but was a huge break for Batista. Sometimes you don't get that. You don't get to call where you want to do all the moves. The ropes come into play, and you think you're somewhere else in the ring. And Triple H is right there. One, no, only a one count. Not enough. He barely got that yes lock in. He barely did any damage, and uh, he's got to do a little bit more if he wants to put Batista away. 
You know, I'm gonna throw this at you. We have four, three titles here on Raw. What if, what if Triple H won the world title, Batista and Ric Flair the tag titles, and Sami Zayn the the television title? They'd be running things here. Man, he's got they they've got to go through the the Wyatt family first though, and and that's a rivalry I'd love to see the Wyatt family versus Evolution. Who wouldn't want to see that? I mean, you got Bray Wyatt as television champion, uh, Luke and Eric Rowan the number one contenders. I mean. I don't know. There's there's a lot to happen, and it's going to be a long road before we get to see that reverie. But I'm going to tell you what. Daniel Bryan has been very impressive in this match. And if he can beat Batista, I see no reason why he cannot beat John Cena for that title. And that's the thing, though. John Cena not being on Raw, does that give him a little bit of ring rest? Uh, or, is, or is he saving up his health? You know, fighting in all these matches has to take away from your, your momentum with uh, Daniel Bryan. You can't go out there every night and get injured. Uh, John Cena not wrestling. Oh, he's rolling. He's crawling for the pin. Is he going to? No, he's getting up. I thought he was going to crawl for the pin. Oh, yep, he did. One, two. No, oh, two. Another count. kick out by Batista. I will ask you that, though. What What is what is better, wrestling and uh, keeping, keeping a, a win record or uh, taking some time off and uh, recuperating? You know, I think those are vicious shots to the the chest of Batista. I don't know. I I think that taking some time off and recuperating is probably going to be the better the better thing to do. But man, I cannot believe uh, this has all been Daniel Bryan. I mean, he's been taking it to Batista. Yeah, this is, this is definitely. Oh, again with the kicks. We know this always sets up for the yes lock, or this might end it right here. And Triple H just watching this. He's he's got a front row seat to watch his friend get beat up. And again, not much participation on Evolution's part. And I think this is Oh that that looks like it's it. One, two, no, two count. That's it. I think Triple H has figured that these this first month or so is gonna be a lot of evaluation. I mean it's uh -oh. been a uh -oh. oh I thought it, I thought it was Batista bomb, but it's not. It's it's a oh, jackhammer? No, just a suplex. Just a regular suplex. I thought he was going for a jackhammer or some move. Like, oh, that's it. That's it. Batista's got the win. Oh, Triple H looked confident out there, but not able to get it's that gonna win. It's going to take more than that to keep Daniel Bryan down. Another belly to belly. Sends Daniel Bryan down to the mat using a lot of power moves, as you know. Oh, and just straight, straight punches to the face. Left hands right to the face of Daniel Bryan. Batista looks like he has him right where he wants him. Ooh. Backbreaker again, just just using those power moves. We saw a sign in the audience that said the yes movement, and you know, Daniel Bryan gets a win tonight, and then goes on to win the the title. I mean, that'll be huge for the uh, yes movement. But the yes movement is Daniel Bryan and all the fans. That that plays a big factor when you have all the fans on your side. I know, I know, Batista has evolution, but you don't have you know twenty thousand screaming fans. And, and that that does play oh, oh spine huge buster huge spinning spine buster that will set him up for the pin and the win right here one two no, no. two count but we <laughs> how know. close was that oh we know what follows that though the the, the Batista bomb if he can hit it that might oh drop kick let's say Batista bomb oh he's getting the fans on his side yes 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 setting him up is it maybe the yes lock oh no he hits him with the knee Triple H is upset one two three it's over he hits him with a say knee. good night batista like we said the fans on your side you gotta love it able to get those fans right there i think batista was ready for the batista bomb but wow and triple h again like we said just just taking a back seat just letting him you know maybe he's maybe he's trying to evaluate if he wants I, evolution to continue i think or not. he is i think he's gonna build the strongest evolution he can. I think right now he's just going through doing some cleaning out and seeing what can happen. And it'll be interesting to see what he has to say to Batista. I know that it seems as if he sent. Oh, oh, there comes his wife. Yes. Well, and you gotta love the support from from the family support. Well, Daniel Bryan is on his way to that title match with John Cena. Will he keep the momentum going his way?